in the name of Almighty Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. As Muhammad peace be upon him narrated, if anyone travels on a road in search of knowledge, Almighty Allah will cause him to travel on one of the roads of paradise. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tarim Su. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching my videos and your wonderful support to make this channel a grand success. We are a family, a partner. Please share and subscribe our channel if you haven't done so far. We as a team can work together to convert challenges into opportunities and opportunities into success stories. These success stories can be monetized into validation in the world by large. Thank you very much for your precious time. Today I am going to discuss my lecture number one on initial startup of FCC unit. On the later on, we will discuss emergency procedure, normal operations, and other a special procedure on fluidized cathartic cracking FCC unit. Okay. Fluid cathartic cracking FCC unit lecture number one on initial startup. Okay, key takeaway points, lecture number one on initial startup. Today we are going to discuss hydrostatic pressure testing, plant inspections, commissioning of utilities, final inspection of vessels, flushing of lines and equipment, inspections and running in of pumps, break-in compressors, service and calibrate instruments, dry out of fired heaters, leak testing, reactor regenerator at dry out, catalyst loading, purging and gas blacking. So these topic will be delivered in the next couple of weeks. Okay. First today we are going to discuss some hydrostatic pressure testing and plant inspection. Okay. Topic number one, hydrostatic pressure testing a general guidelines. Hydrostatic pressure testing of the unit after a final construction completion to prove the strength of the material and weld integrity is normal done as a part of the mechanical completion work. A hydrostatic pressure test is made by completely water filling the equipment to be tested and increasing the pressure to code a required hydrostatic pressure calculation from the lowest pressure rated a piece of equipment in the circuit of being tested. For a successful test, the system loss should not exceed a more than 2% of the test pressure per hour. If the system fails, the test has a greater loss than 2% evidence of the water at ranges, wells, pipes, etc. will indicate the leaking areas to be repaired. Note, hydrostatic pressure testing should not be confused with less severe type test, test that will be conducted generally by operations of personnel during a leak checking. Hydrostatic pressure testing, the entire unit and all of its equipment simultaneously is normally not practical. Generally, therefore, the unit will be divided into sections as going up by the location of the various item of the equipment and the test procedure or process to which each items will be subjected. Suitable blinds must be made up for Insertions on nozzles and a between plunges to isolate the various section of the equipment as required. Normally, the exchanges for the various towers will be attached together with a main vessel's attached pressure. Determine upon the pressure of vessel assembly for the unit during a pressure testing. Wells must be blinded off since a normal leaving pressure will be. Exited. Reactor regenerator are not a field hydrostatically tested because of structural systems consideration and the probability of internal reactor system damage. Reactor regenerator vessels are shop tested 
hydrostatically by the manufacturer. Okay. On next page, we are going to discuss a general guideline for hydrostatic testing. What are these? Okay. Fluid, fluid catalytic attracting FCC unit, section number one, hydrostatic pressure testing. Okay, hydrostatic pressure testing of the unit after a final construction competition to prove the strength of the material and weld integrity is normally done as part of mechanical competition work. Number two, hydrostatic pressure test is made by completely water filling the equipment or to be tested and increasing the pressure to code required the hydro test pressure calculated from the lowest pressure rated a piece of equipment in the circuit of being tested. Okay. For a successful test, the system loss should not exceed 2% of the test pressure per hour. If the system fails, the test has a greater loss than 2%, evidence of water and plunges of wells, a pipe, etc. will indicate the leaking area to be repaired. Note, hydrostatic pressure testing should not be confused with the less severe tightness test that will be conducted generally by operations personnel during a leak check. Okay, okay. An air pressure test may be placed on the suction of the plant apparel to hydrostatic pressure test so that any open lines of flanges may be located and repaired before the test. Number two, all equipment in the suction of the plant to be tested should be rated upon the test pressure. Number three, the test pressure gauge should be installed at the bottom of any vessels to include any liquid head effects. Number four, differential test pressure between the tube and shell side of the heat exchangers, coolers, condenser and combined of heat exchangers must be taken into consideration and a proper testing procedure used. Generally, both the tube and shell side are raised to the lowest attached pressure at the same time. Then while maintaining the lower attached pressure on the respective side, the higher attached pressure is developed and maintained on its respective side. An equalization of the pressure indicates a leak. Safety valves, relief valves and rupture discs must be isolated or removed from the system of being attached. Since their normal leaving pressure will be exceeded. Okay. All spring hangers should be in a pinned positions. Piping should be checked to ascertain if there is an sufficient support to withstand the weight of the water. All vessels foundations must be checked to ensure their ability to support the vessels when full of water. Hydrostatic pressure testing should not be carried out at vessels of well temperature below 15 degrees Celsius or 60 degree F to prevent a metal embrittlement. If necessary, the test medium should be warmed to attain this temperature. Note, sometimes because of ambient temperature considerations or unit dryness considerations, it is advantageous to use naphtha instead of water for testing. Of necessity, this procedure should be reviewed with regard to safety procedure and expected a benefit at the time of initial start. The water used must be clean and contains less than a 5 weight of PPM chloride, never include compressors or pump in the hydrostatic pressure test. Okay, UP procedure prepared to initial start and testing video. Prior to the initial startup, the entire unit must be hydrostatically or air pressure tested by the contractor to ensure the integrity of the welding and that the vessels, exchanges, piping and other equipment meet the design operation specification. Okay, this is also a 
explain the UP procedures. So the initial hydrostatic pressure test of the regenerator assembly. So we are going to discuss a test, testing medium, testing gauges and etc. Okay, testing gauges or test gauges. At least a two pressure indicating a gauges must be connected to the equipment or system under a test. One is to be compound a pressure vacuum gauge located near or at the high point of the system. If the operator controlling the applied pressure cannot be easily read out one of these gauges, an additional gauge shall be provided where it will be visible to the operator throughout the duration of the test. A recording gauge shall be used in addition to the indicating gauges the test on the all major vessel or equipment. Charts from the recorder are to be witnessed by those responsible for the test and included in the permanent record. All indicating and recording gauges shall be tested and calibrated through the test range prior to each test. When testing vertical vessel systems, a test gauge shall be located at the bottom of the vessel where the hydrostatic pressure will be highest. Okay, procedure. Close all low point drains and open all high point vents throughout the system. Water fill the vessels and sections of the system are to be tested, venting air at the high points until the system is liquid full. Use a precautions to avoid any air pockets. Close all vents and raise the pressure with a test pump to the prescribed test pressures. The test pressure shall be held constant for one hour on a major vessel and equipment and one and a half hours on a piping only. The source of the pressure supply must be disconnected before starting the test. Upon completion of the test, care must be taken in draining the liquid from the system to avoid a formation of a vacuum. Restrict the drainage rate up to the capacity of the high point vents which must be open wide before draining. Okay. The hydrostatic test and before the initial startup routine pressure testing using air, nitrogen or steam must be conducted to ensure the lightness of the flanges, wells, packing etc. and generally to reveal a leaks that may have a dwelt subsequently to the hydrostatic test. Okay, plant inspections. The equipment must be checked to see that it conforms to the detailed P&Is and the project specification. In this manner, mistakes in the constructions can be found and corrected early. Inspection of the plant can be physically divided into following areas number one vessels piping heaters exchanges pumps compressor instrumentation catalyst a chemical inventory special inspections or reactor regenerated sections so list of the major points which must be examined in this inspection of uh, these areas okay plant inspection for vessel internal inspection Actual installation must be compared against relevant drawings to ensure that the vessels will function as intended. Particularly, attention must be paid on a follow. Number one, the vessels are trail. Spacing, levelness, orientation, and dimension of the wires, down commas, accumulators, draw off and trap trays, seal paints, distributor baffles, nozzle, artery, contact devices, metallurgy of the trays, contact devices, clips, bowls, nuts and gasket of freedom of movement of the wells, caps or other contact devices, number, size and distribution of tray contact device or are perforated plates, holes, a proper fit of the internal and other systems. Mesh blanketing, vortex breakers, baffles, a type, connections and levels. Okay, second part, vessels internal inspections. 
instrument and nozzles, allocations, orientations, cleanliness, thermoval length and metallurgy, baffle sides and taps. Next, inlet distributor, type, size, orientation, levelness, freedom to expand. Next, non affired reboiler, location, orientation, of proper sports, packing, type, size, sport installation and material. Next, internal ladders and other devices, location, size, orientation, appropriately secured. Number 10, aligning and refractory, hard steel spark, concrete aligning, clean and properly secured, laminate or other specified cement applied according to specifications with no holes or gaps in the applications, metal lining in good conditions, weld overlays have no gaps or holes in the applications, lining is of the proper thickness and covers the required portion of the vessel, other refractory installed correctly with no gaps or holes in the applications, Last, a vessel should be clean, free from trash, and should not have excessive or mill skills. Okay, external inspection. Manvis and nozzle location, side and French dating, and finish metal plurgy with a proper a gasket dots and bolts. Second, a lid and plate forms correctly positions, secure and free to expand. Number three, insulations and steam traces provided as specified and has expansion joints as required. Number four, vessels grounded correctly, correct vessel elevations, wells and instrumentations easily accessible from grade or platform. Last is a piping, adequate sports and guards for all connecting lines, a level and pressure instrument connections are drained to safe location when to atmosphere or blow down are provided as specified, relief wells have been bench tested, check wells exist on the utility line, connections where hard or covers a backup could occur. Okay, next is the pipe. Number one, flanges, a rating of facing and metallurgy type, typically two inch and smaller or socket well 2.5 inch and larger are weld and neck flanges. Number two, gasket type, metallurgy material or retainer, jackets, winding of filters, thickness, ring, size, etc. Number three, fittings, connections and coupling, rating and metallurgy. Number four, wells, rating and metallurgy, body, trim, seats, etc. Packing seats, insert, a bonnet, gasket, grease seats, socket, weld or flange, a type, rating and facings installed in the correct direction of a flow. Lubricant, provisions, gear, operators, extended, bonnets, stops, ease of the operation. Bolting, stud or machine bolts, bolts and nuts, metallurgy, bolt size, pipe, metallurgy, thickness, a seamed or seamless lining. Next is a tubing, size and thickness, metallurgy, seamed or seamless, gauge, glasses, design, pressure and temperature, special materials of construction. Okay, fire heater and flue gas steam generator must be inspected to ensure that can be operated in safe and efficient manner. Okay, following must be checked. Number one, internal inspection. Arrangement and symmetry of burner with respect to the heater wall. Number two, vertical length of tube coil with respect to sport and guides. Number three, fuel gas and pilot burner tips are clean and oriented appropriately. Burners are appropriately mounted with clearance for firing and removal. Number four, tube skin thermocouples if required are located appropriately and installed so that they have a good contact with the tube skin. Okay, number four, refractory is in good conditions before and after refractory diode. No refractory is rustic on a tube. Number six, adequate a space of tube expansions. Number seven, heater shell and flue gas steam generators of flue gas duct is sealed to prevent escape of hot gases and entrance of atmospheric moisture during shutdown process. Okay, heat exchanger inspections. First, name plates verifies a specification. Number B, flange size, rating, facing and gasket. 
Number three, insulation for a heat retentions and a personal protections. Number four, exchange appropriately grounded a tube lot exchanges. Number one, elevation, slot length, piping symmetry, non condensable vents, water coolers where the shelter a tube official and adequate space have been provided for pulling the tubulars, air cooled exchangers, auto verifiables and shoulder stands and specified a motor switches accessible from the grids and located near the exchangers. A conclusion today we discussed hydrostatic pressure testing and plant inspection. Next topic, okay. these are a few references. Okay. This is my last slide, together everyone achieve more. Please do not hesitate to send me your feedback commentary.mc.dr at boss.tt. I will also provide my WhatsApp number. Thank you very much for your patience.